Today's glampires are throwing out the old playbook. So when it comes to the undead, are there no rules? Oh, wait, they only have one fang now? Oh, is, was that a vampire? The vampire mint's a powerful mint, and it's flexible. You can do all kinds of things with it. They are now re-examining the traditions, the superstitions that don't make sense anymore, and as a result, they're creating new things. One big shift, night stalkers are now day walkers. In twilight, they can walk out during the day, but, you know, they have a sparkling effect. Our vampires have a special ring, and they're able now to walk around in the sun. The vampires today, they're barely vampires. They don't sleep in their graves at night. That's part of the fun of it, is making up your cosmology, making up the rules. On the hit HBO series, True Blood, the vampire rules are all relative. There's been a, a, a synthetic drink called True Blood, which the Japanese came up with that vampires can drink to satisfy their need for blood. I hope you'll enjoy your blood substitute, which is costing me $45. Oh, I have no intention of drinking it. I just want you to pay for it. Of course, for vampires, there is no real substitute for a pint of plasma. I guess I would compare it to, like, the patch for a heavy smoker. It gives vampires a whole other struggle of are they going to succumb to those base impulses. This is the burning question for True Blood's vampire with a heart of gold, Bill Compton. Played by Stephen Moyer. Number seven on our list of vampires we love. What works for me all the time with Bill is the melancholy and the sadness and, and the conflict. Jessica, I'm gonna have a guest coming over shortly. Can we eat her? You may not. The British actor didn't have long to practice his southern accent. Moyer auditioned for the part in London and producers put him on a plane to LA the next day. Remove your makeup and make yourself presentable. Will not have you looking like a slatter. A what? A lady of the evening. On the show, Oscar winner Anna Paquin plays Bill's main squeeze, Sookie Stackhouse. Who is she? Is she your girlfriend? Yes. Is she a vampire? No. Oh. Well, do I have to be nice to her? If the couple's on screen passion seems real, it is. Firstly, I fell in love with her talent. After a few weeks, we'd finished working, and I really, really missed her. I think those two are like the perfect match for each other. They really do love each other. After dating for a few months, Moyer popped the question. We were by ourselves at dinner in Hawaii. I surprised her. The season two premiere of True Blood was HBO's most watched show since the finale of The Sopranos in 2007. Awesome. Kneel at the feet of Santanico Pandemonium. Slithering into the number six spot of vampires we love is Salma Hayek as bikini-clad bloodsucker Santanico Pandemonium in From Dusk Till Dawn. Salma Hayek was a very sexy vampire. Wow. I think the reason that vampires are sexy is much easier to lure a person away to a quiet area with the promise of sex and then turn around and kill them. The film had no choreographer, so Salma was forced to improvise the seduction scene with her 11-foot co-star. I'm not a dancer. I've never done this kind of dance before. It was the snake that taught me how to dance. First, Salma had to overcome her paralyzing phobia. Terrified terrified of snakes. Salma didn't get much screen time as a vampire, but her memorable moment was more than enough to make us fall in love. That's what I call a show! Up next, how did this vampire transform into one of the hottest actors in Hollywood? Thought Dracula was supposed to be tall, dark, and creepy? How about big, buff, and bare-chested? For proving even the undead can have abs of steel, Gerard Butler, a.k.a. Dracula 2000, is number five on our list of vampires we love. <sighs> Gerard Butler was not nearly as well known when he starred in Dracula 2000, but he was still just as sexy. He's a goofball in person, and he's a, he's, he was fun. <laughs> not a bad looking guy. Not terribly hard on the eyes. According to producer Wes Craven, while shooting on location, many of Butler's action scenes took place offset. I think uh, most women in New Orleans got to know Jerry, and oh, no, I'm not supposed to say that. But uh, no, he's, he is very seductive, and uh, I saw him with many beautiful women. Despite the movie's sex appeal, Dracula 2000 initially received a chilly reception at the box office. 
Of course, the release of 300 in 2006 introduced the hot, brooding actor to a whole new audience. It also sparked interest in the rest of Butler's body of work. Proving bloodsuckers aren't all pasty white guys. Man in Black, Wesley Snipes, comes in at number four on our list of vampires we love as Blade. Blade is a half-human vampire with a deadly score to settle. He was a vampire who not only hated what he was, but he tried to destroy what he was by destroying others of his ilk. Blade was just down and dirty action. It was Wesley Snipes kicking ass and taking names. I get to beat up a lot of people. The first Blade movie raked in more than $130 million worldwide. <sighs> Blade uh, spawned two sequels and then eventually a TV show and is now part of vampire lore along with Dracula and all the other great vampires. I love it. What's really hot? A female vampire who kicks butt and can do it in heels. I love action movies. You always want to play the boys' role. And this kind of was the boys' role. The number three vampire we love is Underworld's Kate Beckinsale as Celine. There were a couple of actors we were looking at to play the role of Celine. Mila Jovovich's name came up, as did Halle Berry's. But Kate far and away was the first choice. In the Underworld trilogy, Beckinsale plays a vampire on a mission to rid the world of werewolves. I just killed them. I didn't pay much attention to their anatomy. I have two Berettas that fire li liquid silver nitrate to kill werewolves. Kate also had a skin-tight catsuit that made men drool and the wardrobe department sweat. The first couple I wore weren't so stretchy, and every time I fling out an arm or fling out a leg, the crotch would split, the armpit would split. <laughs> Behind the scenes, a real-life love triangle unfolded. Kate Beckinsale came into Underworld with her boyfriend, Michael Sheehan, who was a co-star. They had a daughter together named Lily. Kate and Michael broke up before production began. While shooting the first Underworld film, someone else caught Kate's eye. She fell in love with the director, Len Wiseman, who's her husband now. In the end, the trilogy grossed more than $155 million domestically and established Kate as a blockbuster star. Fabulous. Straight ahead, Twihards versus r -Pats. You won't believe how the haters almost nixed the man who would be Edward. We have to stop this.